Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, diverting a little bit today away from sports, but it's sports adjacent. I know a lot of people are cooped up in their houses right now. So if you're watching this like four years from now, you probably have no idea what we're talking about, although you probably do. But during this self-quarantine period, uh, a lot of people are looking for ways to kill time, hence why you're probably watching me on YouTube uh, or listening to my podcast, The Pat Mayo Experience, which I highly recommend you go download. But for me at home, like I'm running through podcasts, I'm watching Netflix, I'm catching up on old books that I have laying around, but... There's a physical activity side of this that I'm just used to, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's going outside for a run, everything like that has been kind of stunted. So I'm looking for ways in order to keep active at home. So we're going to talk through a few different methods of not necessarily doing training at home to get swole or anything like that, but stuff you can do just to feel physically active. A lot of people right now that I've talked to are remaining relatively inactive. They're not going outside of their houses. And beyond the fact that, you know, if you leave your house, you could contract a disease and you'll feel awful, people in their lack of movement are feeling lethargic and they're not feeling great because they're not moving around like they're usually doing. So we're going to try to talk through some different strategies today of just self-workouts you can do at home. I know there's a ton of on the internet. So I'm going to give you two giveaways to have right now. Giveaway number one, if you subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, which you can find in the description of this video and podcast, uh, leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you enjoy about this show, you'll be in a draw for a 100 DraftKings dollars. Now, if you're watching the video version, smash the like button for the video, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section, and either give me an Instagram account, a Twitter account, a... YouTube channel that has good workout programs that you can do body weight wise at home that requires no equipment because no one really prepared for this. So it's not like people have entire gyms just sitting at their house. So different methods of how to actually work out in the confines of your own home are really important. So the more we can get together as a community, share around some good workouts, I think it's going to make everyone at least not go crazy sitting at home the entire time. And if you can get a sweat going uh, in the confines of your own home, uh, it's probably at least good for the soul, good for your body too, just to keep every Everything moving. Get get some movement in your life. Um, one of the big ones that I'm looking at right now, I've been trying to take my son for a walk on the side streets just to get away from people every single day. Walking's fine. Uh, I'm not a big walker to begin with, but it's getting me out of the house. It's getting me moving. I've also been using an Instagram account called the JL Fitness Miami. Uh, they have some good uh, workouts on there, body weight wise, different circuits you can do. That's on Instagram, JL Fitness Miami, if you want to check that out. And there's a whole bunch of other really great ones out there. But joining me today to break this all down, who might have a bit more insight to a lot of this, is Jordan Jeske at the Project Y E G. And Project is spelled P R O J C T. No E in there. And it's the underscore between the Y-E-G. I'll put that into the show notes of the video and podcast as well if you want to go follow Jordan. Jordan, what's going on, my man? Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for having me on, brother. Yeah, so what are... Well, actually, why don't you just give a little bit of backstory about yourself and what you do right now and how you can yeah. help people get active in this uh, state of sedentariness. Yeah, 100%. So I'm a personal trainer out of uh, Edmonton, and I own a small uh, personal training studio called The Project. And so we do personal training, group classes, and I specialize in golf performance on the fitness side as well. But obviously, we had to uh, we had to close our doors uh, on I guess on Monday or Tuesday we did. So that's completely shifted our our business and what we're able to do. Um, so now it's just like trying to you know we have a big uh, lots of group classes and personal training clients that you know we still want them to make progress and and continue to move and stay healthy through this you know however long it's going to be. So that's. Uh, a big challenge for a lot of trainers figuring all that stuff out, but then also for people uh, finding good routines that work for them kind of based on what they have access to. So right now I've seen some places, I know uh, up in Canada, Good Life Fitness has started to do this. And I believe Barry's all across the world has done this where you can kind of subscribe to whatever channel they have or their Instagram account and they're doing live workouts. I even considered, I'm not going to lie to you, 
putting in, uh, starting to do live fitness videos. Like, I'm going to get a hit of the curve on this content. Then I saw everyone was doing it. I was like, I don't think that people want to see me work out. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm in, like, pretty good shape. But uh, I probably don't have the best form with a lot of this stuff. So are you guys trying to do some online classes or anything like that? Or is that, like, phase two as everyone kind of wraps their mind around what to do next? No, we've kind of already jump-started. So, like, our big thing, like, even on Instagram and my own personal one, too, is we're able to provide as much value to our clients and just even just people around the world, right? So we put a lot of free content out in general, uh, but this has definitely kind of made us now be like, okay, we got to really step up our game with uh, what we offer. So we just started posting stuff on the project Instagram, free workouts. We're going to continue to post stuff. Uh, we just did our first live one yesterday with uh, another local uh, group called YG Fitness. And uh, I wasn't going to do a ton of live stuff, but everyone loved it. So we're going to put a little schedule out because we had like 25 group classes a week that we did with you know 15 to 24 people who come to the classes so um we're going to try and create a bit of a schedule kind of going forward that people can jump into live because it allows them to still feel like they're part of the community right and i think that's one of the biggest things for us during this time is even though we're self-isolating quarantining or whatever uh we still need to be part of the community and, and make sure that everyone's kind of uh, feeling like they're right there with you so a live part of it is definitely uh, a big component that we're going to be adding in uh, and then we just created also a community Facebook group uh, called uh, Project Strong Community. You can search that up on Facebook. And uh, we're now just kind of using that as a way to be able to just connect people. We're going to be putting nutrition tips, workout tips, um, just a place, suggestions like how to, you know, uh, things to do while you're uh, self-quarantining and, th and stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. And uh, we're just kind of really diving into that now. So. So one of the big things, I like that community aspect of everything. That's one of the one reasons why I wanted to actually try and maybe why I thought about doing a live stream is that if you have a schedule and you do it every day, that's going to be one thing. You know, if I was going to do it once, that seems like kind of a waste at this point. So I'll probably just join someone else's and do the workouts along with them. But it's sort of a kick in the ass to get up and go do it as well. Like I can go search at home yoga or at home whatever on YouTube, but then I still need to pump myself up to be able to do it and if i get tired like five minutes into it, it'll be like eh, i think actually having a live setting encourages you encourages you to get ready to go do something and then you stick with it the entire time because you know I, I i have a I, there's an app that i use called seven minute workout uh it's it's all right it's what i use when i travel most of the time because I, I can do it in my hotel room you don't need any equipment to go along with it but it comes on with a very soothing voice to give you the countdown like keep it up and like that doesn't really work for me i, I switched it over to the drill sergeant one where the guy's like calling me pathetic the entire time I mean, that that really <laughs> yeah. inspires me to go but i know it's different for other people uh but i do think that the communal aspect and having a trainer leading you through it encouraging you to go is going to be a way that you actually stick to doing it and if there is a regiment there is a schedule i mean that's half the battle with workout the way it works for me anyway i know everyone's going to be different with this but i have certain times i like to work out there's a schedule i like to keep and i think getting back into that sort of routine based thing will mean you're not going to quit on it right away too so i think that's going to be very helpful well i think you just hit the, the nail on the head right with maintaining that routine so that's one thing big thing i'm telling all my, all my personal training clients and the community is like with with all this kind of now all this i guess free time or lack of structure and all this uncertainty outside we need to stick to and have a structure in our daily routine, right? So we're putting together uh, kind of ways that people can put together a morning routine. So I just did an Instagram live on just a movement menu, right? So daily movement menu, get up, hydrate, grab some water, um, get a coffee because we need that, <laughs> and then do a daily movement menu, right? So a little warm up, right? And then from there, you can kind of, that allows you to start your day with some intention, with some structure, and then you can kind of move forward. Um, because that's one thing that's going to get kind of thrown out the window is everyone's structures and routines. And so if we can teach them how, hey, here's a template that you can try and use and then figure out what works for you, you can now kind of enter your day, own your day a little bit more, uh, be a little more productive. Um, that's a huge part of it, right? And like for us, like it, this is an interesting part for people that have a hard time or we, you know, we use the excuse of too busy or I got all this stuff going on. Well, now we got lots of time left to be able to get some of these things done that we're putting off, right? Fitness, things around the house, spending more time with the family, whatever it is. Um, but what I think a lot of people had, you know, struggled with, uh, well, in general, is when they start something new, they want to they want to go after it, you know, full board, right? So, you know, okay, I'm going to do a kickstart. I'm going to do a 30-day challenge. I'm going to work out every day <laughs> or, you know, and then get my nutrition dialed in. 
But if you're not used to doing anything and then all of a sudden you go 200%, that's a hard thing to maintain. So our big thing at the gym is progress over perfection, making 1% gains over time. And again, those 1%, uh, percent, those small little changes will yield massive results down the line, right? So, uh, and again, at the same time, you have to be able to uh, create a habit before you improve upon it, right? So if you're trying to create a habit that's now working out for an hour a day and you, you're having a hard time sticking to it, well, start with five minutes. Like you said, seven minute, seven minute workout, just do that, you know? So what are some of the things that we can actually do? So exercise wise, my situation personally is I'm in a condo uh, in a downtown metropolitan area. Uh, I don't have an incredible amount of room to work out. I, I have a living room. I, I also have a one-year-old child who wanders about in that living room, so I try to work out when he goes down for his nap. Also, if people are like looking for ways to kill a day, I know this isn't possible you know, just to have overnight, but like... Oh, ha having a one-year-old child around really makes the day fly by. You're constantly on the move. So there's one workout way. If you have kids, just follow them around for a while. But if not, yeah. if you're just stuck in and you don't have a bunch of space, you don't have, I don't want to say you don't have workout gear, but you don't have a weight set or you don't have a pull-up bar. What are some yeah. easy ways to break out just really rudimentary exercises people can do to get going? Totally. Like One of the big things, I think, too, like with creating new habits is that I, I always say complexity kills execution. So if you try to make it too complicated, try to do all these fancy things, or again, there's so much information out on YouTube, the internet of these at-home workouts or fitness routines or, you know, proper nutrition. And so we are, you know, our brains get all screwed up being like, okay, well, what should I actually do? Right? So I think number one is, you know, over this length of time, you have to sit down and be like, what are your goals? What do you want to improve on? Right? Be like, okay, I want to be able to do, you know, 20 body weight pushups or 40 or 50, whatever that is. Um, and so you can start to do like, one of the things we'll do is like a three minute challenge. Be like, okay, how many pushups can you do in three minutes? Take a three minute break. How many body weight squats can you do in three minutes? Take a three minute break, sit ups. And you can add, we usually, we go like one or two, like we'll usually do some sort of row, uh, pull up or hold or an inverted row or something like that. And then you just start to do those things daily. Right. And then at the end of two weeks, four weeks, retest yourself on that three minute challenge. And if you did more reps, well, you made progress. You got stronger. So I think body weight stuff, right, getting up, like even something as simple as like, hey, every morning, uh, depending on where your fitness level is at, it can range from 25 to 100. 25 body weight squats, push-ups, sit-ups. If you have a band, do some rows. So you're definitely going to want to work on that posterior chain in the back and posture stuff. Um, but keep it simple, right? Don't add too much craziness to it. Uh, I know everyone loves their variety the variety is great, but a lot of times that kind of spins our wheels. So as long as you have kind of a goal in mind of what you want to do, we can write out a little kind of simple plan for that and then add some fillers in. So, you know, some mobility work or some hit routines and things like that. Just keep it super simple. So one of the workout circuits that I've been doing, so I, I'm with you on the fact of don't keep it necessarily complicated. You can have you know a string of, like you just mentioned, like, three, four, five exercises that you can do in circuit form and kind of test yourself like, oh, I'm going to do this for 15 minutes today. I'm going to see how many times I can get through this circuit. Maybe the next day yeah. it's 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So one that I've been doing is 10 push-ups into a circuit of 10 jump squats into a circuit of 20 seconds of mountain climbers uh, and then forward lunges for, you know, so 10 push-ups, 10 jump squats, 20 seconds of the mountain climbers, 10, uh, just no weight squats, but just like lunges on uh, 10 on each side and then run in place with high knees for about 20 seconds. That would be considered a circuit for me. Uh, then I'd take like a 10 second break or however long you need to recuperate uh, and then go back and try that circuit out again. Is that sound like a, a decent way for a starting point to jump into this? Yeah, hundred percent. Like one of the big things, like the way we kind of structure things as well is like, just like make a list. Like you can make a list of you know, and you can search it up on YouTube or whatever else or Instagram and be like, okay, make a list of lower body exercises, make a list of upper body exercises, core exercises and conditioning ones. So like you said, like there's so many different ways of being able to structure workouts as far as like Tabata, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, um, and AMRAP, so as many rounds as possible, right? So, you know, put the timer on for 10 minutes, pick four exercises, 10 or 15 reps each and just crush it out as many times as you can in 12 minutes. So, uh, but like, taking something like you just said too, right? It's picking like one or two lower body exercises, one or two upper, one or two core, one or two cardio, making that a circuit. And then 
you know, going from there. So now you're getting full body. You're still getting moving, right? Keeping it simple. Uh, but it can be super tough still. And it can be super challenging depending on rep sets, time. And you can just kind of start to play around with it. And I think this is going to be a great opportunity for people to uh, really start to kind of see where they're at physically, test some things out, um, and have time to, to retest these workouts. And be like, hey, man, like, you know, I only got, you know, five rounds done uh, at the beginning of the week, but now I'm, you know, doing six or seven rounds at the end of the week, right? So that's, that's awesome. So. So one of the big things right now, if I do want to break it down into lower body, upper body, core, and cardio, if I'm at home and I'm trying to do some cardio workouts, I mentioned the yeah. high knees in place that you can potentially do, uh, see how long you can do that for. What are some other cardio workouts I can do from my house? Yeah, so again, like cardio exercises, right? Like obviously when we think about cardio, we think about metabolic conditioning. So elevating that heart rate, bringing it up and down. Um, in the end, like if you want to really kind of maximize your time. So again, a lot of people may have treadmills at home and that's great. But a lot of times if you're really trying to create efficiency as well, obviously we got lots of time. So if you want to run on the treadmill for an hour or two, you can, but, uh, somebody running on the treadmill for an hour at steady state for an hour, or six days a week versus somebody doing like a hit style training, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, oh, hold on a second. Can, can, hold on a second. Just, uh, can you explain to people what uh, hit actually is? That is interval training, correct? That is interval training, exactly. So cardio interval training, so high intense interval training. Uh, your body, if you can kind of elevate that heart rate and then bring it down and then elevate back up and down versus just kind of keeping your heart rate at this level, you're going to see more results as far as weight loss, stamina, all that sort of stuff. So um, if somebody wants just a quick cardio workout to do, it could be a new, it could be a number of exercises. It could be, you know. Okay, speed, uh, body weight speed squats to jump squats, down to mountain climbers, down to push-ups, right? So you can start to mix, you know, strength and cardio exercise together, right? Um, if you're just looking for straight cardio stuff, yeah, you like got jump squats, you got burpees, you got uh, mountain climbers, uh, you know, step ups or jumps onto a couch or something, right? There's a lot of ways to be creative uh, and set it up, and that's kind of what we're doing on the Instagram page and, the, and all that is be able to kind of show people like, hey, here's a structure. You can do and uh, start playing around, picking and choosing exercises, right? Be like, hey, here, you know, if you want to do full upper body, do a full upper body. If you want to do full or whatever, right? So uh, once again, if people don't know, and again, we're talking to, you know, people trying to break in, trying to do something at home, the beginner totally. set. Uh, so again, the T-H-E project, P-R-O-J-C-T, no E, underscore Y-E-G on Instagram. And you can find out a lot of these exercises. You can see some examples of everything. Or if you don't know what some of those exercises are, you don't know what mountain climbers are, you know, the internet's still around. You can just Google that, figure it out, and construct something yourself uh, and really get into that. I think it's important to really hammer down on the cardio side of things. Like, I'm still doing strength training. Like I mentioned, I have barbells at home. I have weights at home that I can keep my strength up a little bit, but I'm trying to really resort to the body weight exercise. And I think keeping my cardio up when we're dealing with a virus that's going to you know, really affect people that don't have good cardiovascular systems, do not have high immunity, that kind of thing, that keeping your cardio good seems to me like it's going to be relatively important in this time. Yeah, absolutely. Like in anything, right? Like even with strength training, like it's still going to raise your metabolism. Your metabolism is going to be stronger and, and faster. Uh, and then, yeah, like doing any sort of cardio, keeping the heart healthy is going to definitely be super important. And I think um, it doesn't have to be crazy because at the same time, working out too much, if you're trying to be, okay, I'm going to work out three times a week or three times a day now, you know, you got to like recovery is going to be a huge part of that as well, right? Allowing your immune system to recover and be strong and all that. But finding that good mix of, you know, again, start if you're you know, kind of just getting into this, you know, go three times a week, right? Do a little kind of full body cardio uh, kind of endurance exercise or workout. Um, see how you feel and just kind of base it off that. But it's definitely um, lots of ways to be creative at home and be able to keep that keep that progress moving and, and staying healthy at home for sure. When it comes to strength exercises, I mean, a lot of people know most of the core exercises, whether it be sit-ups, leg raises, squats, although squats is more of a compound exercise that can really yes. work out a lot. So, I mean, you're going to work out your core, you're going to work out your legs, it's a bit of cardio as well. Would you recommend more of those exercises or saying, hey, I'm going to do cardio today, or like we mentioned off the top, try to hit four or five exercises that combine everything else? 
Yeah, again, like it's, you kind of have to map out kind of what your goals are, how much, how often do you want to work out? So say if a client was coming to me, they hey, Jordan, I want to work out three days a week. I don't have much um, experience as far as strength training and stuff goes, but I'm going to commit to three days a week. I'm going to have those three days a week as full body workouts and then probably have some sort of cardio core finisher at the very end and just keep it super simple. Um, using this time, again, at the project, we focus a ton on strength training because people are used to the, you know, the boot camps and the cardio stuff and, and the hit style kind of training. So, but what, where people get nervous is strength training because they're like, well, I don't know if I'm doing it properly, the form and all that. So that's a big thing. We're going to do a little tutorial here in the next day or two that we'll put up on our Instagram of just the basics, right? Squatting, uh, doing some hinge work, deadlifts, uh, lunging, overhead press, push-ups, just going through form so that people feel confident uh, as they're doing it on their own. I think that you just kind of hit on the key word, and it's something that I struggle with from time to time because – like I've been trying to do a push-up challenge every single day that you now I've been home self-isolating where, you know, how many push-ups can I do in, or how many push-ups can I just do in a row? So you know, one yeah. day it starts out at, you know, let's say eight, then it goes up to 17 or just keep on going. Maybe I try to do that twice a day. Uh, you know, yeah. It kills some boredom. It gets my endorphins going. It gives me a bit more energy because like I mentioned, being at home all the time can make you rather lethargic. It makes you tired. And once you get tired, you get a malaise over you. And a lot of people right now are dealing with, you know, it's not necessarily me, but I know like a couple of my friends that I've talked to, like they deal with anxiety and the anxiety of everything that's going on outside of their doors is really stressing them out. So they think that there's constantly something wrong with them. And the fact that they're not moving around, they're not releasing endorphins, they're just getting more tired and tired. They start to think that they're seeing symptoms of this stuff where in fact, they don't actually have anything wrong with them. It's just, they're not moving around like they normally would that just putting oh, even yeah. 10 minutes of exercise into your routine, you can really see yourself feeling a whole lot better and you'll have more energy. So do you think something like twice a day, let's say at 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. You, you, for three minutes or however long it takes, you just try to crank out as many push-ups as you can do? 100%. Like I said, this starts with, that goes to my theory of like 1% progress, right? Like, it do, like don't, you know, don't be like, oh man, like this person's doing so much work and I'm only going to do this. If it literally is just like one minute of push-ups, perfect. That's it. You've done more than what you were going to do. And then you start to create that habit of, okay, now I do push-ups every single day for a minute. Well, now I'm getting pretty good at that. So now I'm going to go for two minutes. Now I'm going to go for five minutes. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to add some sit-ups in there, right? And so just start small, just start to create that habit, and then you can start to improve upon it. And so absolutely, anything, anything is better than nothing. Um, and so if you're just getting into that routine, just start small. Don't stress it. Again, we know the body weight, you know, kind of exercises kind of universally and just Go through that stuff first, and then once you get comfortable with it, you can start to add some extra exercises or complexity to it. Uh, the other thing I really wanted to hit on was not necessarily dieting, because at this time, what you have access to is probably what you're going to eat. But I do know a lot of people yeah. are ordering takeout right now far more than usual. For some people, this is not a big change in their day-to-day -day life. They're at home ordering <laughs> takeout three times a day. That's what they're going to do. But people are trying to ration supplies. What do you think are some ways that... Because that also is a part of it, too. When I talk about this malaise and being tired and, like, feeling shitty all the time, like, some of it has to do with the new diet that you're going through. Like, you're eating a lot of processed foods. Access to fresh foods might not be quite as available as they once were. Or you don't want to venture out to the supermarket to go get it. So what do you think? You mentioned, like, waking up and hydrating yourself right away, even before you have your coffee. Like, that sounds like a really good idea. I just wake up and have coffee. Should I be, like, pounding a, <laughs> should I be drinking a glass of water before I do this? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, you know, set up your day. So obviously, yeah, we're really limited to you. Awesome people. I'm guilty of it the last couple of days is you're snacking more, right? And so if you're not staying active, because the same thing, I was just having a conversation with a client that had a workout at home and they're like, man, like whenever I work out, I don't feel like eating crappy food afterwards, right? You want to have a protein shake or eat something healthy. So if you're lethargic and you're just not getting the motivation to get up and do something, then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, like I'm bored and you're just going to start eating because of that. Um, so getting up and doing something is going to help you make better choices at home. Uh, and then again, like my big thing is like just try and get proteins, fats, and fibers in every single meal, right? Uh, a lot of people, it's just mostly carbs, uh, proteins, fats, I guess, and carbs, but a lot of people, it's just a lot of carbs, right? Uh, proteins and fats are going to keep you more satiated, right? So if I have a protein shake or a piece of chicken, I'm going to start to feel a little more full. And so I'm going to be like, okay, maybe I don't need to uh, have that snack that I was going to have. Right. Or again, if you're getting hungry, just make a little, okay, I'm going to 
wait 10 minutes. I'm going to have a big glass of water, wait 10 minutes to kind of see where I'm at. Something as simple as that can kind of curb those cravings. Um, but yeah, in the morning, just kind of set up that, that routine, owning your morning helps you own your day. Uh, and I think you'll having that structure will allow people to start making good decisions and productive decisions throughout the day. And one thing that I've really found out because, you know, I wasn't always someone who worked out a lot, uh, and I got just yeah wildly out of shape, wasn't feeling good about myself in like my early twenties. And then I started going through it again. And this just might be a personal experience. Uh, it may not relate to you out there, but maybe it does that even just doing a little bit of this exercise is going to mentally make you feel better too. Uh, like you'll feel like you have more energy. You won't feel quite as down. You feel like you're accomplishing something as well. Like Little victories in a time like this, I think, are going to be huge. And like you said, trying to organize your morning. Own the morning. Uh, I mean, maybe you don't wake up until 1 o'clock now, but, you know, own waking <laughs> up at 1.30 then uh, to try to do something because it will set the course the rest of your day. And you know, just being inside all the time is not going to be great for anyone's mental health at this point, that trying to accomplish something, feel like you're progressing with something, even if it's just the most minuscule of tasks, I think is going to be big. You mentioned hitting on protein. Obviously, not all of us are going to have access to you know, a backlog of protein powder or tuna or chicken, like the protein that we think of. Is there anything that we can buy in like cans, like whether it be like canned lentils or something like that, that can give us access yeah. to some of this protein that we need? Yeah, like lentils, beans, things like that. Um, something that can kind of last longer than, you know, cooking a piece of chicken. You can obviously throw it in the freezer and stuff like that too. Um, again, like getting vegetables in. There's still obviously it's carb source too and fiber source, but there's small amounts of protein there as well. Uh, trying to get everything you can from Whole Foods. Uh, I know, you know, all the essential grocery stores and things like that are still open. So when you're going there, um, just try and, you know, shop on the outside uh, and grab, you know, some of that stuff that's going to kind of, you know, it's going to give you that brain power and even, even like, you know, loading up on fat. So like I have like rice cakes that I'll just throw some almond butter on top and just something like that, or even just like a small little handful of almonds, uh, that, that fat in those, in those sources will start to give you more brain power too, and just kind of sharpen you up a little bit. Uh, and then all this kind of working together just keeps you more mentally strong and, and, uh, again, kind of putting it all together going for a walk outside. If you have a big staircase at home, just you know, go up and down 10 times and then, you know, go back to watch some Netflix, right? Yeah. Well, one thing that I really like that you posted on your personal Instagram page was this 52 pickup full body workout. Uh, I yeah. think if we, I mean, some of it you know, requires some equipment and everything like that, but not everything does. I think you can really, especially if you had sort of a diagram of how some of the stuff could work. One thing that I did with my pals the other day was four of us got on uh, like FaceTime uh, and we yeah. had, you know, in the middle of the day, we're all kind of sitting at home. We, we were all taking a break from work. Uh, my baby was down. My other friend's child was sleeping. The other two were just, you know, going on their lunch break. And we decided to play this game through FaceTime. Like, I think jazzing up the exercise a little bit and making it the more communal experience, even if it's not like a large group, like tuning into an Instagram live, just something you can do with your friends. Like, this is a game in a sort of way, but it's an exercise game. Stuff like that. I think if you can reconstruct it, call it like the quarantine pickup. 52 i think that'd be really yeah. cool no I, that's a fantastic idea actually like uh, what i've noticed like even in people's stories that are tagging us or just friends is that they've kind of set up this kind of facetime and had like three or four people and they're kind of all doing kind of this online workout together i think it's a great way to stay connected uh and kind of keep that community-based thing um but yeah like even with like the 52 pickup like one of the reasons especially at home workouts at the gym a lot of us will do sets reps all sort of stuff that's great but that gets pretty boring at home. So having, you know, something like the, the card game, you can change the exercises for whatever you want, right? It could be cardio core, it could be upper body, lower body, full body. Um, but now it gives you that end in sight. So now all I have to, I have to do is, okay, I'm just going to finish that deck and I'm done my workout. Or I'm going to do half the deck and I'm done. Or me and my wife or the kids. Like my buddy was playing with his son the other day. And it's like, it was now this fun way of being able to, get some exercise in, connect with the people in your house or, you know, over FaceTime. And yeah, it's a great idea. All right. I think that will do it. Anything you want to impart to the viewers and listeners, Jordan, before we get out of here? I guess the last thing too, like I said, is just like, you know, just small, like just get moving every day, create a system, right? Uh, have your goal, but then your system, just like a sports team, their goal at the end of every single year is to win the championship. But the ones that obviously skill has a play, uh, place to play, but, the ones that win have the best systems and kind of owning that process. So, you know, mark out what are your goals, 
create a bit of a morning routine, have a set schedule of kind of what you're doing if your life allows for that right now, and then just stick to your system. And as you continue to do that, you can continue to refine it, and you'll start to notice yourself get faster, stronger, feel better, move better, and uh, that's going to be one of the biggest things kind of going over these next few months. All right. Thank you so much for being on. I thought this was really helpful. I hope people out there really try to figure something out, create a routine, just get rid of the monotony of your day-to-day life. It'll, you know, it'll, like I mentioned, it's going to make you physically feel better. It's going to enhance your immune system if you can actually help out your cardio just a little bit in these times instead of just wasting away, snacking on the couch. It'll give you a bit of break from what you're doing at home. Uh, it'll pass the time a little bit better. You'll feel better and you probably won't snack quite as much and therefore your reserves of food aren't going down either. Uh, fewer trips to the supermarket as well. So Jordan Jeske, at the project underscore y e g no e in project follow them on instagram check that out and like i mentioned if you want to get into a draw for 20 DraftKings dollars smash the like button to the episode leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section and you pass along as a community we've been talking about communal stuff here an instagram account facebook page a youtube channel that has some solid workouts that you've been doing share those along with all of the viewers and hey you can win 20 DK bucks while you're at it as well. Uh, and the $100 giveaway sub to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, Apple podcast, Google podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, doesn't matter where it is, leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, and something you like about this show, and you will be in that draw as well. Pat Mayo Experience is going on every single day. We're trying to cover a myriad of topics. You can always follow me at the PME. T-H-E, P-M-E, Twitter, Instagram, wherever it is. Uh, If you have any questions or you have any ideas about upcoming shows, because in this time we're going to be trying to come at you every single day with new content, again, to help you pass the time. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!